Thanks to everyone who's already engaged with our content, who's been subscribing, who's been sharing. Um, yeah, we're super, super grateful. Um, and there's so much more to come. Um, and in this video, we are talking about... Traveling to Ghana during COVID. Now, I know COVID has been a crazy time for everyone. Um, but it's even more crazy when you're traveling, especially as a family. Mm. So we're going to break down the things that we've done to get from London to Accra, and I hope you like it. Okay, so number one, just like anyone traveling, you need to make sure that you either have the right passport, or if you don't, then you need to get yourself a visa. Now, each country has its own requirements of what's needed for the visa. For example, you need a letter of invitation. I heard in Canada that you actually need the person that's inviting you to Ghana to send their passport picture as proof of who they are. So make sure you check out the government's website and what is needed for you to enter Ghana. Make sure you get that sorted, give yourself the right time frame. It can take up to a week, especially during COVID. Um, the difference is that the offices haven't been open. I think they're opening now, but they haven't been in the past. And so people are doing it by a post and online, which makes things take a bit longer. So make sure you sort that out and you should be good. And yeah, and double check your passport as well. So if you have dual nationality, for instance, and one of your passports is an ECOWAS passport, um, and actually some islands in the Caribbean as well. So if you have a passport from one of those countries, just double check and cross check um, with Ghana's website because you may be actually and granted entry without even needing to get a visa. The next thing to think about when traveling to Ghana is ensuring you have the appropriate injections. So I know yellow fever is one that's a mandatory requirement before you come in. Um, another thing to be mindful of as well is malaria tablets. Um, so the mosquitoes over here are real buggies. They're real, real buggies. <laughs> They come for you, they have no mercy, None at all. they want that foreign blood, they want it, they fresh. want it, they want it every inch of it. So, <laughs> ensure that you have your malaria tablets and um, you can get them from your local pharmacy ahead of traveling. Um, I would suggest maybe getting some before you travel and then you can actually get some in pharmacies in Ghana when you arrive and they're slightly cheaper. So some malaria tablets you can take weekly or some you can take daily. So you do need to think of this ahead of time because for example, one that you take on a weekly basis, you need to take two weeks before you leave, your duration throughout in Ghana and then once when you get back. So just make sure you factor this into your traveling time. So one thing that has been the biggest pain for all of us in this time is this COVID test. Now I don't know who's already taken the test already, but the thing is absolutely dreadful. So the things that happen in your COVID test are, it's, there's two stages, yeah. so they do one down your throat. Now for me personally, it wasn't that bad. It was definitely uncomfortable, never wanted to do it again, but it was bearable. The worst one is the one that goes up your nose and it's this long stick, so it's sort of swap on the end, where they're just, oh my gosh. And, the, and the thing is, yeah, once they stick it up your nose, it, it goes deep. Deep, it's like it's touching deep. Like brain. it's not meant to go there. It's not meant to go But the worst bit is then they start twisting. They're trying to say that. They're not beginning to be bad, is it? They're turning. They're actually wicked. The COVID test is horrible. Yeah. So all you people that work for the NHS that have to have it on a regular basis, absolutely all right. That thing is hell. So you can do it private or by the NHS. Well, actually, when you're traveling, you're not meant to do it by the NHS. Yes, so no. I guess it can do that at all. But we had to do it privately. Uh, it was £139 each. And then once we got there, we decided we wanted someone to do it for us so that we made sure it was done correctly and got the right results, which was then another £15 on top each. Each. So it was very expensive. Um, to do, but we know we knew we needed to do it to get into Ghana. Guys, we just done our COVID tests. <coughs> that thing there. I'm not even gonna. That thing there. It's, it's not for the faint-hearted. Guys, I just did a COVID test. The thing up your nose is the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> real tears so the covid test has to be done 72 hours before your flight yes 72 hours before your flight so that means you have to book your flight whether you book it months in advance or not 
and then you, you literally have three days to do the test and get your results and pray that you're going to be negative because if you're positive then what you can't travel and you need this certificate for you to check in they will not let you check in without it so the company we were with um gave us our results within 70 hours so imagine the amount of shaking i was doing mm. waiting for that email to we come through we literally got our results on the morning of the flight the morning of the flight mm. and imagine you're traveling as a family it's crazy but yeah make sure you get your covid test done um there's a snippet here of what is on the government's website depending on where you're traveling from in the world make sure you keep checking the website make sure you're up to date with it because what we noticed with things were changing daily mm. and with covid i think we've all seen that no one really knows what's going on so things do change daily so make sure you stay on top of it so the next thing to think about when traveling is obviously your airport experience um and that was interesting to say the least firstly you have to wear a face mask throughout the whole duration so the minute you get into your airport um, ours being Heathrow, um, yeah, we had to wear a face mask from start to, to end. Um, so yeah, that was interesting, especially if you're running a bit late and you run, you have to run a bit. Um, you're not sweating. In you're the sweating. Mask. You can't breathe. You're sweating. <laughs> it's it's a lot of things. Lot so of give yourself enough time. Um, another thing about the airport experience is there seems to be a lot less people around. Yeah. Which is which kind of works out good because things move a bit smoother. I love it. Um, Another t thing to think about is the fact that if you've been upgraded or if you have priority, um, they may not necessarily honour it the same way they did before. Mm. Um, so for us, I know that typically we would have been allowed on the plane early sooner, but due to COVID protocol, they fill the plane from the back instead of from the front. Um, so those are just some things to bear in mind um, when traveling, just to think about that airport experience, give yourself as much leeway and time as possible um, to make sure that's smooth. Hey guys, um, I thought I'd do like a little video. We're here on the plane. Say hello. Hello. It's there, nice and comfy. Um, so uh. it's been a day, but it's a whole other thing. We're now on the plane, comfy. We're on, well on our way to Ghana, which is just mad. Um, it feels so weird that you like can't see my mouth. Anyways, um, I'm knackered, just want to sleep, not gonna lie, but it's good. The plane is actually fully empty, like, no one, no one empty, so, um, yeah, it's really interesting in these COVID times. I'll give you more of, like, uh, talk about, like, COVID travel, because it's a bit different. But um, yeah, it's all good, we're all well, so like, yeah. Also, the food was just, everything has to be in packets mm. and airplane food was never good to begin with. So now the fact that you're giving me this pizza that squashed and rolled and in this hot packet, it was, it's not the one. So luckily we already knew this, so I made sure I bought some food beforehand mm. and it was with us, especially having a um, three-year-old every parent knows you need extra so um just to keep that in mind make sure you have the food that you actually like with you buy it at duty free um when you can and i think it'll make it a lot more easier 100%. so guys just a reminder please 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 comment like subscribe we love the interaction we love the fact that you guys are giving us ideas for future videos this is exactly what we need so please keep it coming we appreciate it next point is the test on arrival. So Ghana has said to all that when you land in Ghana, we have to make sure that you have no COVID. And the way that they're doing it is by testing you at the airport. So I already spoke about the dreadful test that we had to do 72 hours before catching the flight. So now this one was basically the same thing. So what happened actually, which I have to say Ghana are amazing at, is that it was very organized. We literally got off the plane, walked down the corridor and someone was waiting there for us. They took our name, our passport number. We then went to a cash point because we hadn't paid for the test before. There is a link that you can pay for the test before, but we decided to just pay once we got there, um, took cash out and then paid for the COVID test there and then. And it was how much? 
It works out to, it works out to 115 pounds. Yeah, I think it's like 150 dollars or whatever. But yeah. that's what we paid, and we had to pay it in cash. Um, and then the next stage was literally us going into a booth to then take the COVID test. Um, so this horrible thing again. There was a swab down our throat, and then there was another swab up our nose, mm. which was I still can't get over the pain to this day. But I, I, honestly, I don't know how people. My, my sister's a doctor and she said if you don't get teary eyes, they haven't done it right. So, yeah, just look forward to that. <laughs> literally looking forward to it. So, um, once that was done, then we literally um, had to go down into like a waiting area and they will not let you do um, immigration and walk through until they have your result. And the result literally takes 30 minutes, which I think is amazing. If you think about it, in the UK, we were waiting 70 hours. We were literally at the airport receiving information. So this is a way better system. Um, so once we received the, um, it's like a slip that you'll see here, um, then we could literally go show our passports. We done the passport consulting and then we were through. What was amazing about it is in that 30 minute gap, they were able to bring all our luggage through and it was literally waiting along the side for us. So it was, I found that it was just so smooth. The whole airport experience for me was very, very quick process. Way better, very quick process, very organized. So well done guys, because I thought it was really good. We literally collected our luggage and off we went. Thank you guys for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think the theme of the whole thing is just plan and prepare. Like COVID has definitely made things a lot harder and added some crazy elements to traveling. Not that traveling was, you know, always that straightforward in the first place, but by just planning, preparing, looking at the websites for each of the countries that you're leaving and going to has made everything a lot easier. Um, and overall, it actually wasn't a bad experience. We got here perfectly fine with loads of luggage and a three-year-old, so I'm sure anyone can do it too. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, please comment, give us more ideas, and we'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you. Peace.